Today I'm going to be talking about two issues that I saw on YouTube pertaining to Jamaica. And um, for most of you that don't know, I'm a Jamaican citizen. I've lived outside of Jamaica for many years, more than two decades. At heart, Jamaica is home and um, I've always thought that at some point I will re be returning to Jamaica. So because of that reason, I do try to peek in on what's going on with the real estate, what's going on with the crime, how much Jamaica has changed and so on and so forth. At the moment I live in Europe and where I live in Europe there are not a lot of Jamaicans. So. I'm not in association with a lot of Jamaicans, so the internet is my sole way of getting information and what's going on in Jamaica. Most of the time when I find out what's going on in Jamaica, it's either a week old or two days old or three days old. But despite me missing out on the live event, I do try to make my opinion on issues that I see that's concerning to Jamaican Jamaicans and I share as Jamaicans would say my two cents so there are two issues that I'm gonna cover one is the police officer in Jamaica Mark Shields and the second one I'm gonna cover um, as a matter of fact I'm gonna cover the second one first so Mark Shields I will leave for last um, I came across a woman who was she was a white woman that heard a video on YouTube and she was just sharing her disgust and resentment of the double standard treatment to Jamaicans in Jamaica. Sadly, what that woman needs to know is that is a long standing behavior in Jamaica. Um, there is prejudice in Jamaica among Jamaicans. I don't know where it began, but I can tell you that ever since that I was a child, there has been several invisible barrier lines in Jamaica, you know. Um, it goes from fair skin to light skin. It goes from the type of surname. I, I attended one of Jamaica's most prominent high schools. And I was one of the small group of that high school that you could consider the ghetto kids. And I can tell you, there are lots of bright boys and bright girls that come from the ghetto, that strive to success, and they actually make the grades. Do they always get chosen for the prominent high schools? No, it's not because of their grades. Most time it's because of their address. Most time it's because of their surname. When I went to the high school that I attended, there were fancy names, light skin, curly hair people that attended that school that in our class we used to call them footballers because their average grades did not go over 11. They had, they had grades like, I mean, how do you get 10 in a, in a maths test? How do you get 15 in a biology test and so on? But these kids, they were still kept in that school and they went all the way up to graduation. Why? They were in public school, they were private school and what matters the most was not how bright these kids were. It was the guarantee their parents will afford the school fee every term while the kids from the ghetto such as myself, my mom or my guardian will have probably some excuse. It's not a guarantee that you're going to get that, that school fee every term from the likes of me. Um, outside of the school realm, I can tell you, I don't know about now, but uptown and downtown Kingston had different meanings. Uptown people were snobby people. They thought they were better than people from downtown. So people who live in Havendale, Meadowbrook, Norbrook, Cherry Gardens and those neighborhoods, um, they were snobs. The majority of those people had a little Indian in them, what Jamaica would call coolie and some of them were fairer skin blacks and they, they they thought they were better than they thought they were better than the darker skinned Jamaicans. So this is not anything new. It's an established known practice in Jamaica. The sad thing is I live in Europe and I face a lot of prejudices based upon the passport I carry or my skin color or the assumption that I'm from Africa or the simple fact that I'm black. 
there is a preconception of you in Europe because you are black. And that preconception include ignorant, criminal minded, troublesome, you're going to create a problem. You're a problem factor. In Jamaica, it's kind of like the same. Black people are seen, black Jamaicans are seen more like the hooligans. According to the video that I was watching, this white woman was friend with a black Jamaican and she was at a bar or somewhere they had a swimming pool and even though she weren't allowed to be in the pool, the fact that she was white, no one created any real noise about it. But the day that she invited her friend over to have a drink, um, whether or not he was going to use a swimming pool is irrelevant. The fact that all of a sudden the management noticed that um, someone who's not supposed to be here is, is here, it shows you how bias as I, I before I became before I started vlogging my opinions I used to write blogs and most of my blogs um, I speak the truth you know I live by a quote that I wrote that says my pen writes no prejudice so even if I'm talking about my own Jamaican people I don't write in a bias factor I say it as it is and one long-standing fact about Jamaican people, especially the ones in government, they are what Jamaican call Frighten Friday. Jamaicans tend to suck up to people because they have a foreign accent or because they're not Jamaican. Um, I don't know where we were brainwashed and we were led to practice this behavior, but this behavior has been practiced a long time. So even though that guy who owns the bar with the pool it was said to be Cuban don't blame him he's just conforming to what the Jamaicans has long been doing if you are a black Jamaican dark skin you have to work double time or sometimes triple time to prove your potential versus someone who is likely to be a dunce that is light skin or curly haired or has a name that has some prominence to it it's an unfairness that has been long standing in Jamaica for ever. And do I think it will ever change? It might change, but no time soon. When I go to Jamaica, I present myself as a Jamaican and um, I kind of know where to apply myself and how to apply myself. And if I sense any form of bias or prejudice, I'm one of those type of Jamaicans that I speak up. But I've been living abroad for a while. And because I've been living abroad and I've de developed some accent around where or some world in knowledge, uh, when it comes to people like me, an expat returning to Jamaica, they kind of sense you. They kind of feel you out. They kind of know that, okay, you, are, you haven't been here consistently so you do also get a different treatment so even though the treatment that i get is more on the non-prejudicial side there has been times that gone by when i was growing up in jamaica that i know that certain places i couldn't go or certain places i couldn't certain events i couldn't attend because just based upon appearance i would be not accepted or be prejudiced again. So hope that clarifies a few things. I'm sure I, I didn't really read all the comments, but I'm sure there are Jamaicans who emphasize or who have expressed that fact in the comment section of her video and let her know that this is a long standing thing. Jamaicans are frightened Friday. Jamaicans bow down to people who are white, who have blue eyes, who have curly hair or straight hair. Um, for some reason, Jamaicans don't like their skin. They don't like who they are because of the brainwash that's been put in our minds, in our heads all those years, ever since we were growing up as a child. It's like Jamaican used to say, anything too black, no good. And what that simply means, the darker you are, is the more non-human you are is the more unaccepted you are so all of that you could credit to why a lot of jamaicans are bleaching their skin because that's how jamaican culture is it's a part of jamaican culture even though one set of jamaicans are against the whole bleaching thing and 
the skin losing its melanin and all that underlying all that resentment these people these anti-bleachers they also know why people bleach they do know i mean jamaicans have gotten smarter over the years but the ignorance is still rife in jamaica and let's face it you know back in the day when it comes to jobs like working in a bank or here us this or stuff like that everybody wants light-skinned girls light-skinned jamaicans it's only in recent years dark girls are really getting their props or really getting recognized or really seen as you know what you're a queen you know black guys never used to get any props you know they either have to have some money or they have to have some prominence about themselves so it's only in recent times so this prejudice has been going on in jamaica a long long time and i watched um a jamaican a jamaican vlogger who was commenting on it and he actually echoed something that i wrote about years ago you know and what he what he said that i actually i i was so happy to hear him say is when a black person like myself say jamaicans are frightened friday or say jamaicans suck up to white people that go in deaf ears you know the um, blacks and brown skinned jamaican look at someone like me and go him don't know where my talk about but as soon as a white person say that same line everybody everybody pays attention because white is always right apparently you know anyway that's where i'm gonna leave that and i'm just gonna transist right over to mark shields and it falls kind of in alignment with the whole frightened friday thing because mark shields First of all, I didn't know anything about Mark Shields. I've been out of Jamaica a very long time. Like I say, I don't really keep abreast weekly, monthly with the Jamaican news. But, you know, I know wrong from right, you know. So let's get on Mark Shields. Mark Shields, from what I've read and what I've seen online, is a British citizen, a British police officer who has a very impressive and decorative resume as um, a police officer who has, whose career has led him to extending his service in the UK and other European countries. Now that's all good and dandy for Mark Shields and I don't have a problem or I don't see any problem with this British police officer being a police officer in the UK or being a police officer in other European countries. After all, Britain, although it's on its last leg at the moment, Britain has been a part of the European Union for years. And I could see legally how one European Union police officer could be transferred to other countries in the European Union. That's clear cut, you know, in regards to law and legality. What is not clear cut to me is how Mark Shields leave his zone, so to speak, of the European Union and went to Jamaica and was appointed a police officer. Forget, forget the rank, forget what rank police officer he, he actually got. And let's say he was just a district constable. Um, I can't see the legitimacy in that i don't see our uk citizen you have to keep in mind that jamaica is an independent country you know and worst of all i've said it in previous vlogs i'm not even going to get into it anymore but i'm going to mention it worst of all jamaican citizens were pushed in a corner um a couple of years ago by the uk um where a visa sanction was put in them so that was just showing you that, listen, we don't really have any ties with y'all. Um, the Queen of England is still the head of state. I don't really understand how that works. You understand? Because being the head of state is a job. It's not a service that the Queen of England is doing for free. So I, 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 I expect that there is some royalty for being the, um, the head of state. And 
it makes sense that she's out of state. She's out of state because Jamaica had their independence from the United Kingdom where she is the queen. And normally that's who remains your head of state. What I did contest in the previous vlog was, is it even legal that the Queen of England is the head of state to a country like Jamaica and the Jamaicans are not free to visit or roam the United Kingdom? I don't know. This is not about the Queen of England and this is not about the visa policy. I've described the Jamaicans where the visa policy is concerned as they have this roll over and die attitude. Where Jamaicans are concerned, especially the government ministers, as long as it doesn't affect them personally, it's not a big deal. And I'm sure that 90% of those ministers, when they were swearing into office, their oath goes something like, um, I'm doing this for the people. You understand? I'm doing this for Jamaicans. I'm doing this for Jamaica. But once they get in the office, like I say, if it doesn't affect them or their immediate circle, um, it's all good. Everything is fine. Anyway, Mark Shields. How did he become a police officer in Jamaica while being a, while being a British citizen? He's not even a naturalized Jamaican citizen, you know? And Mark Shields is as British as they come. He's a white person. Frighten Friday, Jamaicans. British can go to Jamaica and they can have whatever position they want. And it's no problem. Turn those table. I'm a highly educated individual who currently lives in Europe. And my Jamaican nationality means nothing. And if it should mean anything to, to the people in Europe, it simply means that, you know what? You're not one of us. You're not from the EU. So we're not even gonna acknowledge your intelligence. Your qualification and your intellectual level means nothing over here. And our citizen, the EU citizens come first. I doubt if I could even get a job in Europe as a security guard, moreover, a police officer. But Mark Shields can go to Jamaica and become a police officer and dictate how Jamaica policing should be. And not only that, he could also, because what drew my attention, because I, like I said, I didn't know what was going on in Jamaica. What drew my attention is that Mark Shields is being considered to be the next commissioner of police in Jamaica. I've never heard anything more ridiculous than that. And Jamaicans who know better will either be cowardice and don't say anything or don't contest it, but is, would it be anything new? No, it's, it's not anything new. It's what Jamaicans have allowed um, white people to do to them all, all the time. You know, Jamaicans, let's face it, we have two terms in Jamaica that applies rife when it comes to us. One, we're licky licky. Two, we're frightened Friday. You know, if a black man say, this is how you build a tent, it means nothing. And if a white man comes and say, this is how you build a tent, even though he says it the exact same way the black man just said it, the white man word is gold. And for that, I have to turn my nose up on my own people because it's every, since I've started doing vlogging, I, my channel was never dedicated or never intended my channel was never intended to be a jamaican subject matter if you follow my blogs on wordpress i write about a variety of issues you know and i decided that i'm going to start a youtube channel and i'm just going to talk about a variety of issues as well um whether it's issues where i'm living issues about jamaica issues about life issues about anything but the last couple of my vlogs happened to be talking about Jamaica. Only because this morning I woke up and I went online and as I was there looking online, I seen something about Mark Shields could be the next commissioner of police. And I was like, who's this Mark Shields? And you know, it was shocking to me to realize that um, Mark Shields is British, he's white, 
and is is being um, considered to hold this high po um, position. As a matter of fact, he already held the position from what I read. I feel for my Jamaican people, especially the ones that are ignorant, because they don't know what's going on and they don't even realize that according to the Constitution of Jamaica, they have a voice. Whether the Constitution will be upheld or not, that's a different story. I just wanted to say, in my opinion, Mark Shears is illegitimate. He is not a legit police officer. And the Jamaican government need to express their obligation to the citizens of Jamaica every so often. For example, when someone like Mark Shields come in, put out a, a press conference, put out something in the newspaper, explain to the people who's Mark Shields, why is he here, and why is he able to be in the capacity of a law enforcement officer. It is disrespectful to the rights of Jamaicans to just bring someone in from the United Kingdom to an independent country and just, you've been doing great in, the, in Europe and we like your resume and we want you to come work for us. Um, maybe the guy, maybe Mark Shields went, um, and how does um, permit and residence and, and how, oh, forget that, forget that, you know, we want you, so we'll put you in power. I don't know if that's how it goes, but that's how it seems. Expats and Jamaicans who are living in Jamaica love that country and love the people. We love the energy, the smiles, the, the different faces, and I'm pleading to the government of Jamaica to make some initiation towards this invisible prejudice line that you and I both know exists. And for the people of Jamaica are concerned, the law-abiding people especially, the good people of Jamaica, read more, understand more, use the internet, use YouTube, use a camera, use your phone, be a voice, say things. Each one teach one. And this is the whole purpose of my vlog. Um, it's not really to radicalize any movement. It, it is really to open eyes, to, to teach people what I know. So someone can make a comment below and says, well, you got this wrong and you got that wrong. And this is the situation and that is the situation. Each one teach one. I'm not saying I know everything. I'm just saying where Mark Shields is concerned, it is a slap in the face to Jamaicans. It is a disrespect. It's insult to Jamaicans. I understand that a lot of ignorant Jamaicans, whether they are in power or not, enjoy the double standard, enjoy being Mr. Big Man or Miss Big Man or Miss Brownskin or Mr. Brownskin or Miss Curly or Mr. Curly. I understand that. But what you all have to understand is you all need to abide to the definition of the Jamaican motto. Out of many, we are one people.